product. Yes, and Robert Imperiali to give you a very cool business tip. And we will be inspired by so great pieces. Yes, and a very special offer. Let's get started. Let's do it. So the artist I have today for you is very special for me because actually she was one of the first to be certified by Power Paul America. Help me welcome Deborah Wogan. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you. Awesome. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started with art? I got started with art as a child. My mother was artistic, not in any specific way, but she liked to draw. And my mother had a rule that we couldn't sit and watch TV and do nothing. So oh, if nice. we were gonna watch TV, we had to embroider or weave or do something else, but we had to, we couldn't just sit there and do nothing. So we, and she crocheted and she sewed and we all learned to sew growing up. So I've played with fabrics all my life and I still love to sew. I wish it was mm -hmm. more affordable than it is right now, but that's okay. Um, and, you know, and she taught us how to draw. We did a lot of drawing. And then she also did embroidery and painting on fabrics and things like that and quilt blocks and my grandmother's quilted and all that. So it was just kind of in our family that we did a lot of those kind of things. That's and nice. then as well, I got I, I like your mother already. <laughs> yeah. Um, I appreciate that now. I didn't appreciate it at the time, but I appreciate that now because we all have different skills. I have five, four sisters and we all have different skills and we all still use all those skills that we learned so cool. and they've been very valuable and my dad was very hands-on and could fix things and repaired a lot of things so it was just kind of that kind of family but um when i was so in high school i oh, sorry i cut you go ahead that's okay what well, before you met Pover paul what kind of medium were you using i was working primarily in fused glass I'd been a stained glass artist for 35 years and I taught a friend how to do stained glass. And then she went and found a class on fused glass. Mm -hmm. And so we went and took that and I was hooked after the first class. It was just- I can't see the art glass great. behind you. Yeah, I, it was everything I liked about stained glass, but it came together faster, mm -hmm. you know, cause you just laid it out and put it in the kiln and let it melt. And, that's really and that's really cool. so that's yep. been really a fun. I've played with that for probably the last 10 years. And when I first saw Power Pole on your program, I thought, oh, I could combine this with my glass. And I have combined oh, glass in several wow. pieces that I've done. Because it's just kind of a natural. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I made a mermaid and she had, there was like a trail of water coming down the side of a rock. And I did that all out of glass as kind nice. of a little mosaic, that type of thing, which turned out really pretty. And the little otter actually has black glass beads that I made for his eyes. Oh, yes. So. Yeah, uh, that's very cool. That's very interesting, yeah. Deborah, because I know a few fused glass artists and like, you know Jody Macarena of Russia, right? right. When she's here right. in the studio, she always makes the joke. I'm always making something and most of the time it has to do with fiber. And she goes, oh, fiber, no. <laughs> so it's very interesting that you actually could combine such different mediums. Yes, and I think they combine well, actually. Very so. cool, very cool. Now, tell me a little bit about the tutorial we are going to watch today, The Otter. Well, I, we, I live at the Central Coast in California, near Morro Bay, or, or San Luis is a bigger town, if you haven't heard of Morro, Morro Bay. And we have lots of little sea otters in our bay here. And they're really fun to watch. And they're just fascinating little creatures. And so I thought it would be fun to do a sea otter. And I had found this, I got a box in the mail that had this packing paper in it that was interestingly textured for packaging material. And I thought, ooh, that kind of reminds me of the kelp in the bay when you're out kayaking. And so that's kind of where the idea for the otter started. And, and then I wanted to do a tutorial, but I wanted to do something different that other people hadn't done. And so I thought, I think I could figure out how to do an otter. So <laughs> it was a process of it was trial and error, but I got it. Yes, and you know the kelp, I really love that. Do you have the otter nearby? I do. So 
This is the otter. Oh, very and this light colored stuff is the packaging material that's yes. coated with powder. Yeah, yeah, that's very cool. And, and as usual, not only feeds your creativity, but also the recycling, the giving new purposes. I love that. Right. What do you, you say too. if we watch the first part of the tutorial? Very good, let's. Okay, let's watch. Hello, my name is Deborah Wogan. I'm an artist on the Central Coast in California in the US. And I'm currently doing open studios tours here, which is why you see the display behind me. That's two weekends in October, which is really a fun thing to do. Today, I'm gonna to share with you a little video on how to create a sea otter. Living on the Central Coast, we have a lot of sea otters here. We see them in Morro Bay all the time. So I'm gonna share with you how I created this little guy. He's made entirely out of, you know, power pole, recycled materials, plus a little electrical wire, masking tape and aluminum foil, and a little bit of hockey tape in there. So I'm gonna share with you how I did it step by step, and let's get started. Thank you. This is my little sea otter. He's made from a wire armature, and the body is built with aluminum foil. Then he's wrapped with um, hockey tape. So I'm going to apply a single layer of power pole to this little guy and let that dry. I'm using two different colors because the sea otters along the coast here are kind of bicolored. Their head and shoulders and neck are usually a light tan and the rest of their body is a darker color. So for the darker color, I've mixed a little bit of black power pole in with the bronze. And then for the lighter bronze, or the lighter tan color, I've done a tiny bit of bronze mixed in with the white powder pole. So those are the colors I'll be using for this. So let's get started and we'll start painting him now. So I'm going to paint him and then I'll come back and let you see what he looks like all powder pole. The best way to start doing something is actually making it. Here on my table today, I have some of the products that you need to start this project. The first one is the PowerPole White. This is a brand new product from PowerPole. I have this beautiful power color, Baby Blue, that will give an extra color in your project. So when you buy those two products together, they usually cost you $55. But just today, because you are watching the show, it's going to be for you $43. When you buy it, you get this beautiful little hat to finish your project. It's always interesting when it starts to take shape, right? So Deborah, tell me one thing. You, you met PowerPoint, you combine with glass, you start creating, then what? Then what? Well, then I decided to get certified through you. Uh -huh. And I was lucky enough to be able to come to Salt Lake when Beverly yes. taught the hearing class a few years ago, which was really fun. I really enjoyed that. And it was I fun to get to meet everybody. I enjoyed you gave me. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, we live in the middle of wine country here, so it's just kind of something you do. You bring wine. Yes. So, but, um, so yeah, I just, I've been playing with different things and different ideas and I've made several different statues and I always look at rummage sales for interesting fabrics. Oh. So I, I did a, a lady that's in the show right now. She's a red, a flamenco dancer and she's made out of red silk pajamas. And I used oh, the really? transparent fabric for her and her dress turned out beautiful out of the red silk. And How then I have- How do you create I, a piece with Paul? Um, I try to do it about, I'm always working on something, but I try to finish something like once a week. Sometimes it's once every two weeks. A lot depends on if I have to figure out the engineering for things. Uh -huh. You know, if I have to I, I engineer something, then it's like, okay, I need more strength there, you know, uh -huh. but, um, like I'm working on an angel right now with big wings and she needs more engineering for those wings. <laughs> what about classes? Yeah. Have you given any classes? I've given one beginner class to a couple of friends, and I'm talking with the Art Center in Morro Bay about teaching classes there. And I'm also looking into teaching classes here in my studio. Um, uh -huh. But right now we have, we have to have social distancing of six feet apart, which 
really choose up the space that's available to have a class. Right. So yes. it yeah. might only be a class of two or three, but uh -huh. I actually did open studios in October and I got a list of names from people who were interested in taking classes. So I already have three or four people interested in taking a class. So oh, now we're just good, working because, day. Yeah. Yeah. Like many people, you got started and then the virus hit, right? So it right. didn't help a progression of things. But the important thing is that you gave your first class. That's very yes. important. And that now, was tell fun. me one thing. When we were talking before we got started, you told me you didn't have many pieces out there, even though you are a very prolific artist, uh, because you have them in shows. So tell me, how did you get to the shows? Um, I'm a member of the Art Center in Morro Bay. And so they, they announce the shows that they have. And sometimes they have a specific subject, like in January, it's often the birds because it's like the winter birding season over here. So that subject matter might be the birds in January. And so if I have birds made, I can put them in that show. You know, um, it depends on what their subject is. I haven't found too many other shows to put them into that I feel comfortable putting them in. Um, but I like working with this group of people and, 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 then, and they, they take care of things and they don't lose things. <laughs> so that's good. That's, How many pieces important. you have there now? I have five sculptures over there right now. Very cool. And I sold three or four at the Open Studios tour in October too. So that's another reason I don't have a lot on hand right now. So, very, but I'm working that, That's a very good problem to have, right? Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> now you told me that you do something special when you send a piece to the show and I think this is going to be very, very valuable for a lot of people thinking about showcasing their pieces. What is it that you do? I make up a little sign and I attach it to each statue explaining this is made out of recycled t-shirt with fabric hardener. You know, this is her name and or his name, depending on the statue. And it's completely weatherproof. You know, and then I give them my name and phone number and tell them if they have any questions about the care of it after they buy it, mm -hmm. you know, give me a call. But because I found at the Open Studios tour, people kind of walked right past it until I started talking about the statues and said, oh, this is out of recycled T-shirts and this is out of recycled this. And then all of a sudden they were really interested. And then they came back and looked at them and then they bought them. Yes, so, that's, that's a very good point because many times people by looking at the piece, they have no idea of the materials right. being used. And, and that's one thing that is so unique with the power pole, right? We can get fiber, like you got the packing paper and you turn into something beautiful. Right, and over here, because we're at the coast and we have a lot of moisture and fog, anything metal outside rusts. Oh. And the beauty of power pole is it's never gonna rust. And so oh, that, no. to me, that's a real selling point. And especially uh -huh. when you're looking at the bronze statues and you can tell people this is never going to rust. They're like, really? Yes. Yeah. You know, so that's it's a, a great good tip. And, and you see, I love how your mind is thinking because you're looking what's in the piece and what's around you that could actually be selling points when you're saying or you're telling them, you know, of a common product, things get rusted and this one doesn't. So why not bring that up instead of right. assuming people could uh, really get into that conclusion by themselves, right? Right. Because they cool. won't know if you don't tell them. Exactly, exactly. So what do you, do you say if we watch part number two of your tutorial? I say, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, our little otter is most of the way dry. I can handle him and not come up sticky. So you can see I've done his head in a different color than I did the rest of his body. I've taken the rest of the colors that I had mixed up specifically for this, and I have added paver pole, or to the paver pole, I've added paver sand and also paver, plat, paver, paver stone. So we have paver stone, we have paver, paver sand, and we have the paver pole in this because I wanted a thicker mixture now because I want more texture on his body and I want to cover up the texture of the hockey tape. So I will apply this with a brush also and I was just going to show you in the certification class Beverly Alawa recommended that we 
maybe pick up these containers. These They're fast food containers, but they're clear plastic, and they come in a sleeve, and then you can buy the lids. These are the best containers. They've been the best investment I've made because not only can I label the lid with exactly what I have in there, but I can also see, as I turn the cup around, because it's clear, I can see that I've got everything well mixed in these little tubs. So now, and since I'm going back and forth with the same colors, I have a brush designated for the dark color and a brush designated for the light color. And I just put them in a Ziploc bag in between because it's not that long since I've used them. And now I'm just going to go ahead and apply this with a brush all over his little body. And when he's completely coated, then I'll leave him to dry and we'll come back and work on the next step after that. Thank you. Our little otter is just about dry. He, he's not cured, he's not fully hardened, but he's dry enough that I can handle him without making any marks in him. So I went in and I added a little face. I put little glass beads for his eyes and then I used paper pole to do his ears and his nose and his mouth. So now I'm ready to put him on a base. I've made the base out of four layers of cardboard. I wrapped it and sealed it completely with masking tape. Then I made a custom blue color in the paver pole using the white paver pole and paver colors. And I've covered it with several layers of plain paver pole. Then I added some paver plast to the paver pole that was already colored and have painted it with several layers of that to make sure that it's completely sealed and weatherproof. So our little guy is going to lay on his little bed of water right there. This is some packing paper that I received something in and I've coated it with paver pole. I thought this would look a lot like the kelp beds that our little friends lie in. So I'm going to place the paver pole on this on the kelp bed and I'll trim it to cut and wrinkle it up and do some things like that to give it the texture that would imply that he's in the water. Obviously he's not in the water but you rarely find the otters out of the water. So that's what I'm going to do for his background and then he just he's about done. I'll glue the kelp down to the board with more paver pole. I'll probably paint another layer of blue on the paver pole and then stick the green kelpie stuff into that. And that will be our little otter. I'll be back in a minute and show you the finished product. Danielle wants to show you more about one of the products in the Power Power line. Hi, I'm Danielle with Curious Mondo, and today we're going to be going over a product known as Power Paul. Power Paul is a fabric hardener, also known as a textile hardener. So I'm going to show you what Paver Paul looks like and a little bit of how to use it. So as you can see, Paver Paul is a liquid. So this is the Paver Paul bronze and I'm going to stir it up. And then we're going to demonstrate how to make it useful. So we're going to take a Paver Paul wrapper, which is a fine gauze. I'm going to stretch it out a little bit. And I'm going to just dip it in the paver pole. I'm going to wring that out. Now, when paver pole dries, it actually becomes a hard and immobile uh, surface texture. So it's useful for so many different things. So what I'm gonna do, because paver pole does dry quickly, is you can just kind of let that air dry a little bit. Or if you need to speed that up a little bit, you can also wipe off your hands. And then we take a dryer. And then what we're going to do is attach it to a natural product.
there you go. And that is the start of our Paverpal product. And remember, we have a special offer for you today. Power Paul White and Power Color Baby Blue just for $43. Today only. Go to powerpaulamerica.com and get yours. Oh, it's coming together, Deborah. That's exciting. Okay, so I want you to show me some of the pieces you are working on and tell me a little bit about what inspired you into creating that piece. Well, I watched one of the videos that you've posted on making the mask. Oh, and nice. And so we'll start with the mask. She needs a little bit more work. This is the basic mask, but she needs she needs more detail and she needs mm. a little bit of um, pizzazz added to her. So, and then I have to add, yeah, then I have to add a hanger to the back of her too. And then I'm working on a very tall angel. She's about two and a half feet tall. Uh -huh. And she's on a tall base. And I'm nice. giving her, I want to give her some very large wings. So these wings are going to kind of swirl around her, but they Do need, you already they need know what you're using as the wings itself. Besides the wire. I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to do the paver clay. Oh, interesting. Okay. Because I, like I think it. I'd like the texture of the paver clay. I've been playing with the paver clay and I really like that, Very but that's cool. why I need some extra engineering to make sure uh -huh. the wings are going to be strong enough to hold all of that. Very so, cool. And then I've actually, I actually decorated this bottle uh -huh. with paper, paper and <laughs> tissue paper because I needed a, something for the tipsy ladies to stand up next to. So uh -huh. I'm one of those, that one of my sisters. The tipsy lady. Yeah. <laughs> you know, actually we have somebody here that also works with events. So she's uh -huh. been collecting different types of wine bottles and some other drinks just for both of us to be playing with Pover Paul, for real. Oh. Yesterday she came, oh, I got this beautiful bottle. We got to do something with that. Bottles are fun. <laughs> I'm right there with Jody on bottles. <laughs> yes, so. they are. This I'm thinking of doing like a little elf on the shelf with this one. Uh-huh. Very cool. It'll just be so a girl instead of a good boy. What will you, usually inspires you? What do you look for inspiration? I look for inspiration any place I am. You know, nice. it, I learned, I took a watercolor class five years ago when I first moved over here and it changed the way I looked at everything because I didn't realize until I took that watercolor class that, you know, when you look at the landscape, there's not just one color of green, there's 10 shades of green there. Mm -hmm. And in the watercolor class, because you're trying to replicate that, you suddenly start noticing all those different colors that are there. So then you start seeing different patterns and you just see mm -hmm. things differently, you know, so with cool. that background okay. there. So um, if I see something cute or something I really like or, you know, and sometimes it's just somebody says something, you know, mm -hmm. and like I have a friend that wants a manger scene. And so this year we're going to do a shepherd. We're going to do oh. it one figure at a time. Uh-huh. So that's very cool. She decided we'd start with a shepherd this year. And then I think she wants a little manger too. But I you know, the hard part about doing a, something for custom orders is you have to come to the same picture in both people's mind mm -hmm. in order sure. to hit the mark. You know, yeah. so I'm sending her pictures of mangers right now to see what she has in mind. You mind. Very cool, very cool. I have a hard time with commissions as well because exactly what you said. How do you see exactly what they are seeing? in their mind right. of what they want. Yeah. But I also love what you said, that you took a class and that shifted the way you see things. Look how important that is, right? Yeah, because that doesn't apply helpful. just to colors, it's to everything. No, yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, you know, I know people are anxious to see how the order comes together. So what do you say we watch part three? Very good. Very good, so let's watch part three. Show you a little bit of what I had done with this packing paper. Um, it's just a brown cord, or it's just brown paper, but it's got slits in it. And I just, I thought it made a really interesting texture that reminded me of water and waves and things like that. So I saved it. And I had previously painted one side with paver pole, and it becomes very soft and very fragile at the point that it's wet. So then I went through and I opened up all the little slits because 
the first time I painted it, it wanted to just go flat and all stick together, and then I lost all my texture. So I opened up all the little slits and pulled it apart and let it dry good. And now, instead of brushing with the grain sort of of the cuts, I'm daubing the paper pole on so that I don't lose that texture again and don't have to sit there and pick all those little slits open again. But um, what I'll do after this is I'll take the wet side because the other side is already been paver pulled. I'll take the wet side and flip it over onto the board and stick it down to the blue lagoon water that's underneath. And that will give us what we're looking for. It's time to go ahead and apply our little otter and stick him down to his little water path or waterway that he's living, that he's hanging out in. So I want to be sure that he really stays stuck. So I'm taking more of the dark color that I already put on his body and it, that's a mixture of paver pole, paver plast, paver sand, and art stone. Because I really want him to stick. And I have a lot of texture already on the board with the water and the different things that are on the board. So I want to be sure that I have enough here that he's going to stay stuck and not come loose. So, and this is a really strong, sticky... Um, texture and it'll it will stick this guy down once he's dried and cured you'll never get him off of here which is exactly what we want I'm not sure that he's going to go outside a lot but he might go out as a table decoration sometimes or something like that for luncheon so I'm just I'm trying to make sure I don't get it too sloppy because I don't want the the glue part to show so I'm trying to be kind of neat with it and just keep it to the part that's going to actually be stuck to the board. And so that's what we look like there. And now I have a little part in the water that just kind of happened. So that's where this little guy is going to go. And he's pretty much going to stay put. I think he looks pretty cute. Um, I'm not going to hold him all the way up. Or maybe I will, so you can see him. But uh, I think he does, he looks pretty cute. When he dries all the way, I'll go back and do a little highlighting with him, just really lightly, with a little bit of maybe bronze or something. And on this seaweed stuff, I'm gonna keep pulling apart and opening it up a little bit as he continues to dry. But he's basically done. Thank you for watching, bye. Wow, that otter is so cute. Do you mind showing it again for them to see on your camera? Not at all. Look at this that. This is my little otter. Side view. Yeah, and to think this the is base paper is, not is amazing. Real thick. Yeah, uh -huh. the base is not real thick. Um, I was going to start out with a, a plaster of Paris base, but I didn't realize how long it was going to take to dry. So uh -huh. I had to come up with plan B because it took almost two weeks for that base to dry. Oh, really? Because wow. we're damp and humid and cool here. Got it. If got I was it. in Utah, it would have dried in no time. Like five minutes later, it's dried. <laughs> right. That's so cool. What's next for you as an artist? Really, I think it's getting set up to do the classes and getting the word out there. Um, and I may start doing some farmer's markets just to get the word out there about classes. Mm -hmm. um, very cool. Very, very but, cool. Um, but yeah, I think classes are my next thing. And then, you know, I like to try new things. I, lo I love all the classes that you're putting out and the Paverpole TV. Those, those are great. Thank I actually you. taught that little two-hour doll that Beverly taught. That's what I taught uh -huh. in, to the friends that oh, I taught a couple That's of very ago. cool. That's and they just cool. loved it. And it was fun. So how, how is it in California? You don't have a very harsh winter like we do here. Do you normally, I know this is not the normal time. Do you still have events during winter time or not? Uh, it depends on what part of the state you're in because there are places that are harsh like your winters. Mm -hmm. But on the coast where I live, um, it, we almost never get a freeze. Yes. And it almost never gets over 90 degrees and it doesn't usually reach 90. Usually we were uh -huh. we're between 55 and 75 temperature most of the year. Nice. Very you know, cool. We might have a lot of foggy days, but because of that and 
you know, it's this is kind of known as an artsy type of area. So there's always different things Something going on. on. So, so I've been weird. looking through those, trying to see if there's some place else that I can take my stuff and put it in. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So just, just Deborah, to get it out people, there. If people want to get in touch with you, maybe they're interested in seeing your pieces, going to the show, or taking classes from you, where do they go? Facebook is my best place at the moment. And it's either under my name, Deborah Wogan, or under Uniquely Debs. Uniquely Debs. That's very cool. <laughs> you can find both. I chose that name because I couldn't make up my mind and I didn't stick with one art form. So I figured uh -huh. Uniquely Deb Debs covered me whatever I was doing. So, of course, you're very engaged with PowerPo and you're certified to give classes. But I assume, even by your gorgeous necklace, that you're still making a lot of fused glass. I am. Any other mediums so, you're playing with? Sometimes I play with um, silver clay because oh. I've also taken classes in that and I did get certified to teach that years ago. Uh -huh. But I didn't really do that one. It just kind of, that one just kind of fizzled. But I okay. still love playing with silver clay because nice. I love what you can do with silver clay. Yeah, it's amazing. It's very versatile. It I love amazing. that too. Yeah. We actually have an instructor that was talking now about the metal clay combined with glass. So I'm going to mm -hmm. suggest you combine metal clay with glass and fiber. Oh boy, it could be very that pretty. That would be interesting. I have one pendant that is glass and silver clay together. Uh-huh. So it'd be, I'll play with the idea of how to weave some power pole into that because I think yeah. that could be really interesting. And when you're done, give me a call, okay? Because I we will. want to show more. Deborah, okay. thank you again for being here with us. I, it's really important for us here to show people that have believed in us right at the beginning and took the certification and took action. That's the most important part. Oh, sorry, most important part. Because not only you start creating the pieces, but you went after the shows. You went after, let's give a class, even though we were going through difficult times with the virus and everything. So I have to say, I'm really glad to see you again and see how things are going. Well, thank you very much, Shahar. I appreciate everything Curious Mondo is doing to help promote this yes, because it, it helps all of us. And I hope next time you go in your kayak, you get tons of ideas, prepare another tutorial and come back here with us. Well, I'm thinking about a pelican because uh -huh. we have lots of pe pelicans Love here. Them. So I'm thinking a pelican might be good. It would be so. awesome. I know it would be awesome. <laughs> Thank yeah. you so much, Deborah. And I hope to see you, you very soon again. Thank you, Shahar. Oh, so great tutorial, right? I know that you need the right product. And here on this table, I have the PowerPoll White. And for this special offer, taking the PowerPoll White in the Power Color Baby Blue, you will get this beautiful hat this beautiful little hat here. Um, normally, those two products will cost you $55, but just because you are watching us today and learning so much on this tutorial, we, you can get for just $43. Yeah, just $43. Go to powerpaul.com and get this offer. Hey, Jessica, come over here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you wanna see something? For sure. So Trina Bell is going crazy with Power Paul, and mm -hmm. she sent us some of the pieces, pieces she made. Oh, let's look see at this one. Oh, I like how she uses the blue. Yes, very on cool. Piece. Next. Oh, I need that. I need that necklace. I need that necklace. I need that. <laughs> Mano in Mano by Trina Bell. Woo! Amazing. And the famous bird. Well, Robert Imbriali has prepared a very cool business tip for you. Hey friends, Robert Imbriali here with your Marketing Minute. I want to talk to you today about selling your art online. Now, when people hear that, the first thing they think about is, it's too difficult. There's too much technical stuff. I'm not technical. I don't use computers, right? A lot of artists don't use computers. They're not technical. They don't think in the way you need to think to use computers. But I'm going to tell you something. If you know how to send an email, you can list something for sale online today. That's how easy it's become. I gotta tell you, there were a couple of days ago I listed something on eBay and I hadn't done it in a while. So I didn't remember. I remember it was page after page and lots and lots of questions and uploading photos and writing descriptions and it just took forever, 
right? There were so many different options. Do I want a border? Do I want bold text? Do I want this? That? So many things. And I was very pleasantly surprised to see that eBay has got it down to a single page, a couple of questions. You know, you put in your photos, you upload your photos, and it was listed. It literally, it took me less than five minutes to list something on eBay. Well, Etsy is the same thing. It's very simple today. Amazon as well. And now also Facebook. Facebook has a marketplace where a lot of artists are able to sell their art. So if you're thinking about selling your art and you, you get this idea that you want to put it online and right away you're feeling this, oh, no, it's going to be hard. It's technical. It's not technical anymore. You don't have to be. If you can send an email, you can list something online for sale. I've taught people in their 70s and even in their 80s how to do it. And I literally had to show them one time. And they figured out after that it was very simple for them because it's the same thing again and again. So if you've been holding back, well, man, now may be the time you want to set your art up uh, online for sale. All right. Follow me online at Robert Imbrielli, and I'd love to continue the conversation with you, and we'll talk real soon. Thanks for watching. Have you ever thought about becoming a certified PowerPoint instructor? If not, it's time for it. With the PowerPoint certification, it allows you to give PowerPoint classes. You will learn more about all the PowerPoint products and how to apply them. In the best part, you will know how to create a business with PowerPoint. Go to PowerPoleAmerica.com and enroll now. I got mine. Me too. Yeah. It's oh, so I hope you enjoyed the show. See you next week. Bye. Bye.